The switch on this lamp is definitely magical, or at least almost. If I press it, something dramatic will happen. It's impressive, isn't it? Okay, okay, it might not seem mind-blowing at first, but the ability to create light with the press of a button is incredible. Until about 200 years ago, something like this was unbelievable, basically magical. And thinking this way, electricity is the closest thing we have to magic. It is possible to send invisible information through the air with radio waves. It is possible to transmit energy over distance on the scale of the planet. And it is possible to change the chemical composition of matter using electricity. And all these magical effects start here, with the flip of a switch. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. When I flip the switch again, I will connect the bulb to a flow of particles that have an electric charge, called electrons. And these electrons will start to move through a copper wire that connects the switch to the bulb. And as soon as I flip the switch right back on again, the bulb lights up immediately. And I don't know if you have ever wondered what I'm about to ask, but the answer is much more interesting than it seems. When I flip the switch, how long does it take for the electrons to reach the bulb? It seems instantaneous, but that would be the wrong answer, for a couple of reasons. First, the movement of the electrons in the copper wire is very slow. Approximately 1 meter every 12 hours. And secondly, the current that powers the bulb is what we call alternating current. What this means is that electrons in alternating current do not move in a single direction. They go forward, then they go backward, then they go forward and back again, in a repeated back and forth motion. In other words, the electrons that are now in this switch will never even reach the bulb. And yet, the bulb lit up very quickly, way faster than you and I can notice. But how? If you watch this video until the end, you will understand the fundamentals of electricity and will be able to answer the following questions. How fast do electric charges move in a wire? How fast does electricity move in a wire? And how do electric charges move in alternating current? And how on earth does all this light up a bulb? So it's better if we start from the beginning. During decades of experiments at the end of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century, humanity discovered how electric forces worked. Electric force is the force between objects that have electric charges. And there are two types of electric charges, called negative charge and positive charge. Opposite charges attract each other. In this case, positive attracts negative and negative attracts positive and equal charges repel each other. Positive repels positive and negative repels negative. At the beginning of the 20th century, we understood that matter as we know is made up of atoms. And that atoms are composed of smaller pieces held together by electric force. An atom is a nucleus with a positive electric charge, with electrons of negative electric charge orbiting the nucleus. And all of this is held together by the electric force. If the electron receives energy, it can separate from the atom and become a free electric charge. A free electron! All types of electric charge can generate electric currents, but the most common and most interesting case is when free electrons form the electric current through conductors. Conductors are defined as materials that allow the easy passage of moving charges. They are the opposite of resistors, which are materials that resist the passage of moving charges. The material that makes up the resistor often heats up when an electric current passes through it, and this heat is generated precisely by the resistance to the passage of electric currents. Conductors, by definition, have low electrical resistance and, for all practical purposes, allow electrons to move freely. Or at least, almost freely. But we will get into the details soon. The electric current that is lighting my lamp is the result of the movement of electrons through a copper conductor wire. And now that we know what electricity is made of, we can learn to create electricity, which means learning to move electrons. And one of the ways of doing this is by using the electric force. Equal charges repel each other and opposite charges attract each other. If our goal is to move electrons through a wire, we can simply place a bunch of negative charges at one end of the wire and a bunch of positive charges at the other end. The electrons will be repelled by the negative charges and attracted by the positive charges. 
so they will move from the negative end towards the positive end. This is basically the logic of how the battery works. One side of the battery is full of negative charges and the other side is full of positive charges. And then when you connect the ends with a wire, an electric current arises. And here is a note of caution. The electric current, by definition, moves from the positive side to the negative side, while the electrons move from the negative side to the positive side. So, yes, the electric current in fact moves in the opposite direction to the electrons. And yes, this is quite annoying to take into account. The reason for this is because historically we first learned how electricity works, and only a century later did we discover that it is negative charges that make up electricity. The description of electrons fleeing from the negative side towards positive side is not the most complete way of describing how and why electrons move. The presence of negative charges and positive charges creates something called an electric field. The electric field is what actually communicates the electric force of the charges. It is the interaction between this field and a charged particle that generates the movement, which generates an electric current. Electric charges naturally generate electric fields, but electric charges are not the most convenient way to generate electricity. The most convenient way to generate electric fields, and as a consequence, electricity, is by using magnets. Magnets have magnetic fields. Magnetic fields and electric fields are different expressions of the same physical phenomenon of electromagnetism. That is why it is possible to transform magnetic fields into electric fields using movement. When a magnetic field moves, it induces an electric field. And when a magnet moves, its magnetic field moves along with it and induces an electric field, which can move electrons and produce electricity. It is using this principle that electricity is produced in power plants of all types, except for solar energy, which is different. In the case of hydroelectric plants like the Itaipu plant in Brazil, water falling from a height spins turbines with a magnet surrounded by conductor wires. The spinning of the turbine makes a magnet rotate, generating an intense electric field. This initiates an electric current in the conductor wires around the magnet. The movement of falling water is transformed into the movement of a magnet, which generates an electric field which then generates the electric current. And it's this electric current that can efficiently transmit the energy from the falling water at Itaipu across almost the entirety of Brazil. Perfect! So now we have all the ingredients to answer the three questions from the beginning of the video. First, what is the speed of the electrons inside a wire with an electric current? To answer this, let's think about the microscopic world inside a copper conduction wire. The wire is somehow connected to a source of electric energy, which can be charges or moving magnets that generate an electric field. Conductors are excellent at transporting electric fields, just as they transport charges. Then, the electric field permeates the entire conductor. The conductor is full of free electrons and the electric field starts to move these electrons. The average speed of these electrons due to the electric field is typically called drift velocity or drift speed. The drift velocity depends both on the intensity of the electric field and the properties of the conductive material. The path through the wire is not a perfect straight line. The wire is full of atoms, and atoms are made up of particles with positive charges and negative charges. These atoms in the path limit how fast an electron can move even in a conductor. A conductor simply allows electrons to move easily, but there is still a speed limit for this movement. In a typical conductor, the drift velocity of the electron is typically about 1 meter for approximately every 12 hours. To put this in perspective, it will take approximately 2 days for an electron to travel from a switch to a lamp just about 4 meters away. And with that, we answer the first question, which was what is the speed of electrons inside a copper conductor wire? But don't go away yet, because we have just begun. When I press the switch, the lamp turns on or off immediately. But I just mentioned that the speed of electrons inside a wire is very, very slow. And by that logic, if electrons move so extremely slowly inside a wire, then it should take days for the lamp to light up. So how does a switch manage to light a lamp instantly? The answer is that the speed of the electrons in the wire is not the speed of electricity. And even more, electricity is not just the electrons in the wire. Electricity is the combination of the electrons in the wire 
plus the electric field that moves the electrons. In fact, the wire is always full of electrons in all parts, including near the lamp you want to turn on. What actually makes the lamp light up is that when you press the switch, you allow the electric field to reach the electrons near the lamp and move them. And this lights up the lamp. What lights the lamp are not the electrons that pass through the switch, but rather the electric field that now traverses the entire circuit, connecting the lamp, the switch and the source of this energy. A good way to visualize this is to think of a hose connected to a faucet. If the hose is empty and you turn on the faucet, the water has to come out of the faucet, travel through the entire hose and then come back on the other side. And that takes time. But if the hose is already full of water, when you turn on the faucet, the water coming out of it pushes the water that is right in front, which then passes this push forward successfully until it reaches the water that was already near the hose's exit. And as a result, you have the impression that this time the water came out of the hose almost instantly. The second case is the closest to how electrical wires work. The wire is always filled with electrons, and the electric field pushes these electrons forward. And at what speed does this electron field spread? At the speed of light. In other words, the speed of electricity is the speed of light. Okay, second question answered. But hold on, there's still one more thing that I am sure will keep many people up at night. Now we understand why lamps just turn on and off instantly, even with the electron moving very slowly inside a wire. There's just one more problem. The current in the lamp wire is alternating current. The electrons are pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled. And this means that, on average, the electrons do not move from the place. So how does this back and forth of alternating current manage to produce energy? The answer is that a lamp is an electrical resistor and not a conductor. Whenever an electron tries to cross a resistor, it encounters extreme resistance, so it loses its energy. And this energy is usually released in the form of heat, and normally the electron would stop moving. But in an electric circuit, the electron is forced to keep moving by the electric field. So the electric field pushes the electron forward and the resistor steals this energy, giving heat to the lamp. When the electron is pulled back by the alternating electric field, it accelerates again, gains energy from the field, but once again has its energy taken away by the resistor. And then the cycle repeats. The back and forth movement of the electrons is like trying to make a fire by spinning a stick over dry branches. The truth is that it doesn't matter if, on average, the electrons don't move. Because at every moment there is a friction stealing the energy of the movement and transforming it into heat. And this is true both in the case of a campfire, while we try to make fire with sticks, and in the case of a lamp heating a tungsten filament to thousands of degrees to make it glow. In a way, light bulbs are modern bonfires, where instead of turning sticks by hand, power plants turn electrons. What actually matters for transmitting energy as electricity is that there is something in the electrical circuit trying to impede the movement of the electron. And this will generate an expenditure of energy. Energy which then can be used in all forms. In fact, the analogy of the campfire is much more accurate than it seems. Fire is a chemical reaction, and chemical reactions are determined by the exchange and movement of electrons. Electricity is like the ultimate version of fire control, and we give up everything except the movement of electrons, which is where the real energy is. I sincerely hope you were all fascinated, because I was. And if possible, please definitely leave a like on this video and a comment to help the channel grow. Thank you very much and see you next time.